going to start off with uh, going over the code of ethics for interspecies telepathic communicators. And um, how this came about was um, I started out in the 1970s uh, in doing this professionally. And then as I trained other people, um, they went out and taught and the other people uh, sprung up. And uh, then in the 80s, I began to uh, get complaints from people. Um, people would say that uh, some people are not doing the work ethically, or they did this or they did that. And I am in was in this position where I am not going to be a policeman. <laughs> it's not my job. It's not what I like to do. Uh, my attitude is that people are free to be who they are and to make their own mistakes so that they can learn from them. However, as <laughs> more complaints came in, I also saw the need to publicize a way to help people to stay in a ethical way of operating. So that's how I, so I asked Spirit for guidance on it and I lay down on the floor and I opened up and I said, help me to um, put out what is best for people to guide them in this work. And so it came right through me. Uh, I got the words and I wrote them down and edited very little. Um, so this is, uh, I had experience as a counselor for people. So we, we operated under a code of ethics also. So it had some similarities to that, but really it was for this field, this work and um, divinely guided to help people. And then I uh, thought, well, once this is out, then people can, join in, they can uh, realize there's something we have in common, and also that clients will feel more protected. Uh, because if they know that people are following a code of ethics uh, in this very new field, in this field where people are not familiar with how it works, and um, sometimes they're a little scared too that, uh, of what the animal communicator is gonna say or what's gonna happen. Uh, that this will be a guide, which it has been. So that over the years, I, I wrote it in 1990, and over the years, many animal communicators have put it on their websites, have given it to their students, have given it to their clients. Um, and uh, it really does uh, help people. Yes, Jerry, in or out? What do you think? Okay. <laughs> He likes to talk a lot, so you'll hear him. <laughs> it's always nice to have a cat on the recording anyway. <laughs> can you hear his voice? Everybody can hear him, good. <laughs> good, that's important. So the first part of the Code of Ethics, I'm gonna read it and then um, just go over some, anything that comes to me and examples or whatever comes to me to um, elaborate on it. So the first part is our motivation is compassion for all beings and a desire to help all species understand each other better, particularly to help restore the lost human ability to freely and directly communicate with other species. So I see this as a guiding light in whatever you do, this first line that we are here uh, to have compassion for all beings, including humans and including ourselves, and to um, make sure that everything that we do, whether we're doing consultations for clients or whether we're teaching or whether we're just talking in an interview for the media, that everything we do helps to restore the lost ability uh, it's ability, as you know, that is innate in us, that we're naturally able to telepathically communicate, but we're socialized out of it and people lose it. So this is what our work is about, is helping people to remember. <laughs> and so that's, um, that's a guiding light, that's a motivation. 